Hey gang, are you new to this podcast? Have you subscribed on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and realized that you can only access the 20 most recent episodes on those platforms? Do you want to binge on How Did I Get Here while you are quarantined? Well, check out our archives available for free. Simply go to howdidigethere.podbean.com. Look on the right-hand column and our entire catalog is easily accessible by month and year. Listen to great conversations with legends and new bands alike. Over 800 episodes. How did I get here? Podbean.com. Let's get down. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? It's time for... How did I get here? And now here is your host. I'm Howdy. When we talk. All right, hello, I'm Johnny, I'm your host. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? You hanging in there? Staying healthy? Staying whole? What are you guys eating? Has anyone stopped eating comfort food yet, or have you started, or is this going to be like a, well, you know what, maybe I'll just eat cookies every day until this ends? I don't know how long that'll be. I walked six and a half miles today, by the way. Not bragging, just saying. I needed to get some anxiety and energy out of me. I think we all do, you know? I spent the day yesterday doing a couple of podcasts. Um, The video podcast chats are going great. I I enjoyed it. You're going to hear one today. You're going to hear a lot of stuff today, but hang on. Uh... I got I got kind of anxious yesterday to the point where I kind of needed to to cut out and take a nap. And then I took like a 5-hour nap. <laughs> I woke up completely out of it. Didn't know what was going on, couldn't tell what day it was, was very confused. Had terrible dreams while I napped when I woke up. Anyway, I got we're all in that boat. So I'm not saying I'm the only one or hey, feel sorry for me. I'm just saying me too, gang. I'm out there feeling the same way you probably are. Confused, awkward, weird uh there is a sense of accomplishment though knowing that inside of me you know i've been built in entertainment that the show must go on you know i talk a little bit with my guest today about that which by the way is primo primo the alien laura lee bishop musician artist co-host of the podcast heavy friending with joe barlow anyway i was talking to her about this there's a sense of uh the show must go on you know canceling things you know a lot of times we end up playing when we're sick as musicians because you don't want to you don't want to let down the people that you work with you know you don't want to let down anybody really anyway uh with this sense of of the show must go on doing this podcast every day has given me a little sense of purpose like okay well here the show's got to go on i can keep on doing this is something i can do i got to make some music too I started making music. It's hard to be creative because I'm a little bit freaked out. I can talk to people about shit because it feels good too and it kind of takes you out of this weird vibe. Speaking of which, I have an amazing conversation today with Laura Lee Bishop, musically known as Primo, Primo the Alien. You can find her at primothealien.com, co-host of the podcast Heavy Friending with Joe Barlow. As I said, all that stuff before. Uh, She's got a brand new song and she let us debut it. It's a collaboration with European artist Ace Buchanan. The song is called Secret. You will hear it at the very end of the show in its entirety. Now, the single is available for purchase this Friday, March 20th on Bandcamp. I suggest if you do have the money, I know times are tight. We're all getting wiped out. We have all had our work taken away. Some people might have a few bucks to throw here and there. You like the tune? Go buy it on Bandcamp on Friday or next week. If you don't want to buy it on then, or you can't, which I totally understand, it will, be, it, will be, it will be available everywhere on the streaming services the following Friday, March 26th. Now, also, uh, Primo is going to be playing a show, Isolation Fest live stream concert on Friday, March 27th. You can follow her on her socials. I say, I, th- I find that Instagram is the best way to follow her. So go to primothealien.com, find out all the stuff there. There's links to all of her socials there. Follow her on her socials. On her socials, she'll give you more info on the Isolation Fest live stream concert taking place next Friday, March 27th, online. It's the Isolation Fest live stream concert, okay? PrimoTheAlien.com. Laura and I have a great conversation. She is really a hilarious person. 
we I feel like we have a real connection. I've hung out with her outside of the show before, like me and and our friend Samara got together. And uh, me and her and our friend Samara all got together, went and had a, a drink at a place and had a really good time. And uh, and I enjoyed hanging out with her. And I enjoy I enjoy her energy. I find her to be an entertaining person. She has a lot of charisma, a lot of personality, and she is a joy to be around. Okay? So without further ado, enjoy my conversation with Laura Lee Bishop, musically known as Primo the Alien. Let's get down. How are you doing? How are you holding up throughout this? Uh, throughout this, you went to New York to play a show. Wait, are we live? Yeah. Are we live? You always yeah. do this. Yeah, that's how I do this. You don't tell me I don't, when we're starting. I don't. There's no. Cere- You're trying to get me on a hot yeah, it's a mic gotcha. thing. And it's a gotcha. It's a gotcha. It's not gonna happen. It's called. Okay. It's called gaucha. That's when Gaudi Gau- gets you. Gaucha. Okay. When Gaudi well, gets you, it's called. Gaucha. You ain't gonna get. You ain't gonna get me, motherfucker. You keep trying, but you ain't gonna get me. Yeah, man, we're going. You went to New York to play a show, and it got uh, closed down. Yeah, while I was there. Day of the show? <laughs> Sucked. Um, no, the day we landed. Like, oh. we left in the morning on Thursday, and then by the time that we landed, because we left really early. I mean, we left at, like, our flight was, like, 6 a.m. Um, so by the time we landed in New York, it was like 11 a.m. there, 10 a.m. there or something. And everything was different when we landed. Just like the cases had, you know, there were way more cases in New York right, than right. when we left that right. morning. And um, restrictions were, they were starting restrictions and all kinds of stuff. So we really didn't know. And then, um, yeah, I think it was. I think it was. Yeah, it was third. It was the day we landed that we canceled. Well, we just got ahead of it. I wanted to still play. Honestly, I was like, "Fuck!" I just flew all the way here. Yeah. Um. You know, our tickets were really expensive when we booked them because South by was coming, and we had to get like super specific tickets to get right. back in time for South by. Right. Right. Which also didn't happen, and um, yeah, it was tough. And also, this show, my bass player was flying out too, so. I usually just go with my drummer, and yeah, bass player was coming, and so it was fucking mess, man. And uh, then we were there; we were kind of like stuck there. We didn't want to. We we ended up changing our ticket, not the day of our ticket, but we changed the because we were going to fly out of LaGuardia. We we're going to stay the night in New York after the show, fly out of LaGuardia. We had a layover in Nashville because that was cheaper, and we ended up just buying new tickets to get back, so we didn't have to even go into the city at all. We just stayed in New Jersey for a few days and then headed out. Sorry. That's yeah, crazy. That was not an interesting story, but it sucked. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, everybody's shit's fucked up right now. My sister had to cancel her wedding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, it's just a mess. So I can't. I'm not. I don't have it as bad as some people, but yeah, I wish I didn't spend eight hundred dollars on plane tickets or all the advertising for the show or yeah. the band practices. And where all were you? Stuff, where but. were you gonna play? Rockwood. Uh, Nick, Knitting Factory. Oh, Knitting Factory. Yeah, I played there. Yeah. Is that the yeah, one with so. the three floors or two floors or something? Well, well, I I played it back when it was in Manhattan. Now it's in Brooklyn, I, and so I haven't been to the new. Oh, I haven't been neither. to the Brooklyn location. Um, but apparently, it's a it's a big venue. It's nice. I don't know. I it, we rescheduled for July. God knows if it'll happen in July, even so. <sighs> dun 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 we'll dun. See. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. We just had a. I, I'm in a band, and we had a. Uh, I'm in, in a band. I'm in a band, and it's uh, well, it's our livelihood, and so we had to have the yeah. the hey. So uh, <laughs> we're having that conversation now, which is pretty intense, man. I mean, you know, look, we're all uh, everyone's out of work for a while. Yeah. Well, and first so, thing I did was how can we make this work in some way, and so I started talking with a couple people about some of these live stream things. So we've got one set up. For not this Friday, but the next, which is, fuck, I don't even know what dates sure. are anymore of anything. I'm 27th. like, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we have we have a tentative 
a live stream that day that would be um, Primo, Dossi, Zeta Jewel. Oh, yeah. Daisy O'Connor. Oh, yeah. Um, scene. And working on a couple other people. So where, it, it could be cool. Where will you be doing that from? We are on, we've got a couple options right now. Um, okay. I think we're probably leaning towards O4 Center. Okay. Yeah, it looks like so, they're doing um, some streaming stuff. I saw them post some stuff. Uh, yeah. I saw a very comprehensive thing is a 360, austin360.com. Peter Blackstock okay. has put together a Google Doc that he can constantly update with people's live streaming things. Well, that's good. Yeah, so we'll we'll put once we get that solid, we'll we'll be posting about that. But you know, it's just one of those things where we also have had to change that as every day goes. Like you know, it went from fifty and then it went to twenty and then right. it went to ten. Right. And so we're like trying to make sure, like, so it's like skeleton crew and trying to get people making sure the bands are like coming as with a, a band is gone and a band right. arrives. Right. And, you get two bands um, in there and that's it. That's too many people. Exactly. Yeah. And just sanitizing everything and gloves and masks. So we're trying to make sure everything is like very. Um, pr we're very prepared for like all the safety stuff. So, you know, it's just another thing for us to put on the plate as musicians. Are you, know? you are you like in comfortable clothes all day? You have like a future. So this isn't. This isn't like so. So part of the quarantine thing, people are like, "This is crazy." Like I haven't been outside, and I feel like this is like kind of my life. I mean, I work from home. All right. I'm always alone. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I feel like I'm always wearing like yoga clothes. Like, well, I'm always dressed like kind of like this. Um, it so it hasn't been like, as much of a change for me. <laughs> it's pretty futuristic what you're wearing. Well, you know, I try to be, uh, in comfort, but also in style, Gowdy. Yeah. And so, especially when I'm going to see you, why, why do I got to look at your face? Why do I have to look at you? Explain it to me. <laughs> Cause I, I will connect with people by talking to them. I'm not Terry Gross. I'm only looking at myself at myself well, right now i can't stop it's like impossible i'm sorry to look away were you were you upset that you had to do this face to face for real no 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 no. i'm just i'm just fucking with you what are you and joe doing for heavy friending me. for the at my house yeah we, we do it here yeah you can have what yeah i mean i know some what's people, gonna happen joe and laura before. freak out or what's what's the next um, one? Oh, are we gonna do it here yeah. i don't know i i'm like I don't know. I don't know what, what when we're going to record again. We already have one recorded for this week that I still haven't edited yet, of course. Um, and it requires a lot of editing because we just did Dungeons and Dragons. I'm putting a lot of like music behind it and stuff like that. Uh, and I just keep putting it off, even though I've had I had all the time in the world yesterday, and I'll have all the time to do it today. <laughs> But I just don't want to, so. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess we could we could still record if we just, like, you know, it's just the two of us. We keep a safe distance and all that kind of stuff. Um, but maybe we'll just use this as an excuse to have a little break. I don't know. Do you like doing it, the podcast? Yeah, yeah, we love it. I love doing the, like, recording the podcast. But for me, it's a lot harder. I edit, and I heavily edit. I make it, like, we put songs. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I write yeah, songs yeah. for the episode or whatever. So it is, like, a very intense thing for me every week to have to edit these episodes. They're just, they're not like, okay, here, bloop, and then I put it out. You know, I, I always add stuff and do stuff like that. So it does, it is time-consuming for sure. What's going on with music? Are you going to be writing and recording some this week and doing some... Um, yeah, you know, the thing is, I have too many songs, apparently, like, recorded. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm ready to put out an album. I have an album, done, a full length done. Um, and it's mixed, mostly mis mixed and mastered, but I'm getting different, you know, advice on that. Uh, whether or not to release a full length or not, and, or just do singles, or, you know, there's just a lot of different... Think so. I don't know about that. So I don't know if I'm going to be adding any more to my. I'll probably write, but I don't know if I'll be producing or recording anything in the next. I need. I just have too much. It's like starting to get overwhelming. Where I'm like, what am I supposed to do with all these songs? They're done. Right. Are you? Uh, are you like uh, recording them yourself still? Or are you? Yes. 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 Um, right now. Well, the the next album will be all stuff I recorded and produced. Mm -hmm. But um, I also have – so I just released a collaboration in February. I have a collaboration coming out next week. Yeah, what's the guy's name again? Ace, Ace, Ace Buchanan. Ace Buchanan, yes. He's from Finland. 
Um, so we've, yeah, we've been working on that. That'll be done next week or out next week. And then, um, another collaboration that I haven't announced yet will be out in May probably. And so then, yeah, just fitting in singles here and there. And How do you- once this album's out, I think I'll start working with other here in Austin. Okay. Um, with these collaborations, like with uh, with Ace Buchanan, did you, is it is it like sending stuff back and forth? Talk talk me through that collaboration. Like, what did you okay. have first? What did he have first? Who started the thing? Um, it was yeah. So we decided we want to do a song together, and he kind of sent me like a little. One thing that's different, so I, I make synthwave music. Well, I don't make synthwave music, but I'm kind of like involved in that genre. And synthwave music is kind of like, um, for people who don't know, it's like Stranger Things, um, you know, Survive, or the, that kind of like 80s nostalgic. But a lot of times it's um, without vocals, and it, and they use like, you know, analog synths and stuff like that. Tangerine I do more Dream like, style. Right. right? Yeah. I do more like 80s pop. So yes. I'm a little bit different, but I'm I'm... Jason, so he kind of knows me. Anyway, he's he's a he's a synth wave artist, like legit. Um, but one thing I like about him is that all of the songs he's released thus far have been um, that have vocals. He has written the lyrics and melody to the vocals, and and had a hired gun sing on the songs. Oh. So, which is which is refreshing because a lot of these synth wave dudes are just like producers who don't know how to write a song. So um, he sent me kind of like an idea he had and then I obviously changed everything because I always do and then um, we just went back and forth with production stuff over Christmas I kind of like I had written the lyrics and melody and, and sent a scratch to him and then I I produced on it and then sent that and he and then I kind of gave him the reins at that point when I kind of had some like melodic ideas in terms of like lead synths and stuff like that so, uh, and just for the listener, the whole time I've been talking, Gowdy's texting. So I just want y'all to know. I'm not texting. This is why I didn't want to look at you. This is why I didn't want to look at you, Gowdy. I'm looking up shit of yours as we're talking. You're, what are you looking up? I'm look- at Wikipedia? <laughs> no, fool. I was looking <laughs> at your Instagram to see if I could find the uh, next thing to talk about. Uh, to find the next thing to talk about? We're friends, man. We have so much to talk You're about. You're right. I put my phone down. I was looking What's up, up your shit, you? though. What's up with you? Um, what do you mean? What's up with me? I'm I hold up, up in my you? house. I'm doing? talking to people every day now via Skype. I can't do this in my house anymore. It's over. Yeah, my band stopped it's playing. It's pretty. Freaky. So you're in a low point. <laughs> you're am. in a low point. I, you know, man, I, uh, I, I had a low point on Saturday. I had a freak out, <laughs> and then a yeah. freeze up freak out where you just go in bed and you're like, "What the fuck." Yeah, and uh, and now they close the restaurants. I'm doing good. I'm talking to people. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at you, the Primo Instagram. Why do you, you haven't really updated the Laura Lee Bishop Instagram very much? That's what I was. Well, just I noticing. just don't have. That was just my. Per, that's just my personal thing. Like so, I I just don't. I mean, frankly, I never did like posting about anything other than like music stuff. I just don't. I mean, political stuff I'll get on, and then, like, you know, music stuff. But I don't really want to be like, you know, here's me doing something. You know, I usually try to relate it back to, to music stuff. Although I did just post about how I have a pimple in the middle of my forehead. But that's on the I can't see it because the lighting is so. so amazing on this. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. It's, just it's blowing directly it out. in the center. No, it's, it's, it's directly in the center of my forehead. You can't even see it's it. It's insane. You can't even see yeah. it. It's a... It's a stress pimple, man. We're stressed, you know? We are stressed. I had a freak. I had a couple freak outs because, you know, I was trapped in New Jersey and, like, <laughs> had to get on airplanes and stuff. So I was really freaking out. And I'm a freaking – I'm a germ freak as it is. I've oh, you are? I've fucking eaten hand sanitizer before. I've put it in my mouth and swallowed it. That's how much of a freak I am. Like, I, I'm always worried about singing and having shows and getting sick. So I always wear a mask on every plane – um, in the whole airport, I usually wear a mask. Like once it gets close to showtime, if I'm going to be somewhere crowded, I'm a, I'm a weirdo. I mean, I put gloves on and wipe things down. I've always done that. So this is like I've been preparing for this my whole life, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have I've eaten hand sanitizer. So yeah, I had the going to the airport like this was hard for me because my freaking husband 
I'm only as strong as my weakest link, you know? And he's freaking, you know, willy-nilly touching shit. And I'm like, oh, my Lord, please. I got us two separate toothpaste things. I labeled them with Sharpies. I'm like, don't. Just stay on your side. I'll stay on my side. I may send him to the couch. I may send him to the couch, Johnny. I don't know. Uh, okay. It's, okay, yeah. What did you learn about Dungeons & Dragons? Boy, I've been trying to play Dungeons & Dragons for a long time, and no one ever wants to play with me. And when I grew up, I was like really into like wizards and fairies and shit like that. And no one else in my family was, but at Thanksgiving or at Christmas, I bought the little starter kit thing at Target where you can try to play on your own. And my whole family was totally assholes about it. No one to play and everyone was making fun of it and no one participate properly. And I was like, fuck this. I'll do it on the podcast. So um, I got a couple guys, great guys to come on and they guided us through it. And, you know, Joe started off with a little bit of a bad... Well, he was, like, in a bad mood that day, I think. He was just not feeling it that day. And by the end of it, he was having a blast. Dungeons & Dragons is fun, man. That's... It's, like... It's really fun. It's just all your imagination and, you know, if you like improv or any of that kind of stuff, it's, it's you know... So it is right up Joe's alley, and it's kind of right up my alley. So we had a really good time. I experienced it once, and I, I thought I wanted to get into it, and I was kind of lost when I was in seventh grade, like, yeah. as a person. Socially, mm -hmm. I was lost, and I was like, well, these guys are playing Dungeons & Dragons. Mm -hmm. They invited me over. So I go to this guy's house, into this room, and it was not the scene I was looking for. Okay, so it was like an orgy. No, 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 there was no ladies going to be coming by any time. Yeah, Believe yeah, but me. still, you could still... You could still have an orgy with just dudes. You can. You can. Don't. Okay. I just you want can. to make sure you knew because, yeah. you know, it's it's weird times, man. So you just got to. Yeah. This wasn't an orgy crowd that. by any means. These guys okay, okay. Uh, had no. Uh, I don't think their sexuality had been awoken at this point. They yeah. They were also 13. Yeah. I don't know. It was a yeah. long time ago. It was the early 80s. I'm surprised it's hung on this long because it really gets a bad has, rap actually, from people like me. You know, the. The guy who I collaborated with on this song that's coming out. And you know what? I'm going to send it to you and you can play a little clip or something if can you I? want. Okay, I will. Yes, you can. Um, he plays Dungeons and Dragons weekly with a group of guys. and But because of the quarantine, he's playing it the way that we're doing right now via Skype or whatever. So yeah. The dragons in the dungeons are still happening across the globe just through the internet. Yeah. You know? Here's another heavy friending question. Yes. What, what did you learn when you smoked weed on your show? Did you or listen did to we... it? No, I'm asking did you questions. Did you listen to it? No. Well, I'm saying you you should have listened because Joe, what I learned is I don't want to smoke weed with Joe, okay? Because <laughs> the motherfucker freaked out, all right? Joe freaked out, and I wasn't freaking out, but I was, like, worried then. Because he kept saying his tongue was like he was numb, and then I was worrying he he was like having anaphylaxis. But I was fucking high too, so I so then he was freaking me out. The whole thing was a mess, man. I'm sorry I, I didn't you listen really to need it. To, you really need to vet your your uh, your weed buddy, you know, before you go down the rabbit hole. Oh yeah, some people you may yeah you may end up in some a different kind of hole, you know. Does Joe so, not normally smoke weed or do weed? Did he you, doesn't. He, he doesn't. How'd you, smoke how'd you guys weed. do it? Did you eat edibles or did you smoke it? We had a little vape pen okay. that we used. Yeah, we were trying to get popcorn lung, so we can do an episode on that too. But um, no, we uh, we did the vape pen. I think he just got too high because we just were we were trying to get pretty high for the podcast, so it would be funny. Yeah, and I think we just got maybe he got too high. I don't smoke a lot of weed personally because again, with the singing and everything, I get all you know right, worried. Right. Um, but I d I d probably smoke more than him, and I don't know. I was having a, I was laughing my ass off. I was having a blast, and he was like slowly you know melting in the seat. <laughs> I'm like, you okay, bud? And then next thing I know, he's like, headphones are coming off. He's like, no, 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 I'm not okay. <laughs> stop the recording. Stop the recording. <laughs> and then, and then, so I think he's having an allergic reaction because he was talking about his tongue. And then he stayed the night here at my house. 
And so I'm in the bed in my room, and he's in, in, in the guest room in the bed, and I'm thinking, is this fool, like, in there dead or, like, what? Because I'm high and I'm paranoid. I'm like, oh, my God, the cops are going to come tomorrow. They're going to hear this episode. They're going to they're gonna ask me why I didn't check on him. And, I'm, I mean, it's just, it was a rough night for me. So, yeah, but it was, you know, we just – we're close enough at this point that it wasn't, like, an embarrassing – I mean, it was embarrassing that it was recorded, but I think if it was just the two of us, he wouldn't have been, like, worried about it. We know so much about each other at this point. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Do you, how much do you guys talk, like, on a regular basis? We probably talk every day. Okay. Um, we, we text every day. But um, – and then we see each other once a week for the podcast. But then we see each other outside of that. We go have drinks together. We're in the same kind of – we have mutual friends now. And he comes to my shows. And, you know, I guess we're best friends. Yeah. The it's last interesting. The last place I went to have drinks was the other night at that place that I met you and Samara for drinks. Oh, Nickel City. Nickel City. Yeah. Did you think of me? I did. I even told uh, – I'm, I'm, I have a girlfriend now. I know I'm you have a girlfriend up. now. I've been seeing that. Uh, I've been seeing that. I, I said to her, I said last time I was here, I met my friends Primo and, and Samara. I wonder how they're doing. That's what I said out loud. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. It was the night that South by had been canceled and I met with these people from Austin Music Foundation. It's weird how mm. that was that was like this thing. Now you're like I mean, fuck, that was nothing compared to what's going on now. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like it the way that it's um, evolved has been very quickly and very drastically. Like, that's what I mean about that plane ride. It was like we got on the plane and we're like, yeah, we'll still play the show. Like, it's a small venue. I mean, it's, right. it's, a, it's a large venue with a small crowd. There's space, you know. It'll be fine. Before I got on the plane the night before, you know, we talked. I talked about it with other bands, and they're like, "Yeah, we're good, um, whatever." And then by the time I landed, it was kind of like one of those like "ugh" things, you know. Yeah. And I did. I mean, I went through some emotions of like, "Well, fuck this," you know. I flew all the way here. People shouldn't go if they don't want to go. You know, I did all that kind of like trying to justify it things in my head. Well, and I'll I was mad, and then I finally had to just accept. You know, it's just not. It's just not safe. It's just not. You know. There's, al not, there's so. also there's also a thing that uh, that that you have when you're in show business. There is one rule, that's it. Exactly. Show must go on. So that's exactly. embedded and in, instilled in us to the point mm -hmm. where you're like that. It, it's very. It, it's like having blinders on when you're. Yes. Like, you know what I mean. Because people were like, well, no one's going to come. I was like, I don't care if there's not one motherfucker in the crowd. I'm playing exactly, the show. Exactly, exactly. I came here and exactly. played the show. Yeah, the show must go and on. And yeah, so yeah. to get to somehow get off of that, like, this show is happening thing to, oh, my God, this show is not happening was, a was you know, a mental little thing. And I, I mean, and now I feel, like, guilty. You know, I have this, like, guilt about, like, wanting to play it. Like, how could I have wanted to play it when the midst of this chaos and everything but you know we didn't know and we don't and and also that's not it that's not in our in our in our in we've never experienced anything like this we've never thought that having yeah. a show could get other people sick yeah you know yeah. we're like i hope no one has a has a cold and touches me before i play and then i get sick you know what i mean yeah, I wasn't even worried, and that's another thing, is I was like, well, I mean, I, I'm going to be having my mask on, I'm going to be, I know what I'm going to be doing, I'm not going to be getting sick, but then again, you know, people don't do what I do, they don't wash their vegetables with with uh, soap, okay? You do? So, uh, I have been in, in line of this. There's a funny thing that happens when you get into this mode, and you get adamant in describing your what one might call eccentricities. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Your accent comes out. What does your grandmother yes. sound like? Because I think you're... Well, so I... I... When I'm talking calmly, I guess I'm I'm thinking about what I'm saying before I say it. And then when I'm, you know, hyped up, I'm not. My... I am from the country, but, you know... My mom worked with us really – she worked with us a lot, actually, to not speak this way. She's from New Jersey. She has 10 brothers and sisters in New Jersey, a big Italian family. 
And, yeah, my, I guess my grandmother in Texas, she wasn't, like, as sassy as this. But my sister and I are both like this. Like, when we get riled up, like, you can't get a word in, and we go. Both of us will be talking at the same time. We, yeah. She ain't listening to me. I'm not listening to her. We're yeah. just, you know. And trust me, I just had a conversation like this because she had to cancel her wedding, and the bitch has lost her mind now. She's gone. She's gone. She's like, fuck it all. You know, she's, we're on, and everybody's. My be- one of my best friends, I was in his groom's party in New Jersey. He just had to cancel his wedding for April. John was best, supposed to be best man. My husband was supposed to be best man in a wedding this coming weekend that had to cancel, obviously. And the venue's trying to keep all their money. I mean, this is a mess. Oh, my Lord. Help us. Yeah. Help us. Because I don't know what we're going to I mean, I honestly, I'm okay, I'm a lucky person because my husband has a job and makes money. Like, I'm not going to be out on the streets. But um, when I had that realization of, like, oh, my God, I don't know the next time I'm going to play a real show, which is, like, the only thing I want to do ever in my life and, like, what I live for, I had, like, a, <laughs> like a hyperventilating thing. Yeah. Because we don't know when that's going to be because this may last, especially since we waited so long to really like do what we were supposed to do here. Yeah. Um, this spread is going to continue for a while and we just don't know how long. And so it could be, you know, fall. It could be next year. I mean, I don't know. That's scary, man. Yeah. Yeah, it is very scary. You're going to have to start getting on here and selling your body, Gowdy. Oh, got nothing to s- I mean, I've got enough to sell. Oh, that's another thing. I've been eating weird and kind of cooking out in a shameful mm-hmm. way in the night. A lot of cooking out, cooking, eating oh, cookies. Cookie. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I bought like an industrial thing of peanut M and M's, and I just <laughs> every time I go into the kitchen, I eat some. So I bet by the end of the day, I've had like. I don't know, like a super size thing of M and M's. I just do it like four at a time, though. You yeah. Know? So it feels it feels okay. Yeah. Same. Same. Yeah. And we actually, so we don't ever keep groceries in our house. We don't do that. We go to like we're like everyday grocery I am store too. people. I am too. So we have for the first time groceries, and I'm like, hmm, because there's just like so many options. Right. It's hard to stop yourself. But I guess we got to make it last since it's the end of days now. End of days, you know? baby. That's how it's going. <laughs> You're freaking me out. Um, Am I free? I, everyone keeps telling telling me that I'm freaking them out. I'm like, do you want to be inside my head? No. This is me all day. No one does. Yeah, I know. Are need there some hand sanitizer with me? There's uh, people can go out and listen to music of Primo the Alien during their quarantine. This is music yes, that will have, lift you up a little bit. Yeah, and also I have one called Showdown City that is like perfect for this time. It's like all about when the apocalypse comes, you know, yeah. and how it's going to be. So if you want to, like, wallow in it, that's a good one for you. And if you want to just be lifted a little bit, then there's some like that, too. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's something for everybody. There is, and you've yeah. got a new tune dropping. When is that song going to drop? That when? comes out the 26th, Okay. which is next week, right? Yeah. I don't know when anything is. I've been trying to do my taxes. Oof, Lord, that's that right there is is uh, depressing. Doing my taxes, yeah. looking at how much goes out and how much comes in. Yeah, it's not numbers aren't great for me. <laughs> no, you know, man, look, you're building an empire, an alien empire. Yeah, yeah. I I'm wish. looking at I the Empire so. Strikes Back right over right over your shoulder. Oh, really? There's a poster. Is it, if I yep. point like right here, no, 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 is that where it is? No, you're wait. No, you're pointing at the fan at this point. No, no, no. If you point like right here. Oh, you like mean this. on me. I yeah. thought you meant it's in There's your the house. But back. I forgot. I yeah. have posters in my house. Yeah. Are you a big in Star- a weird place. We're all in a weird place. Are you in a Star Wars? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm into Star Wars and I like the new ones. I don't care what anybody says I about do too. it. They were good. They were good. And they keep saying like, oh, only people who aren't like like diehard Star Wars fans are liked it. No. Listen, I've seen all of Star Wars a million times. I've watched the Ewok movies. I've seen the Clone Wars. I've seen all the animated shit. I've read some of the books. I've seen um, all the prequels. I saw the freaking Christmas special with the Chewbacca's dad masturbating in the weird uh, 3D chamber thing. So I've seen it all, and I still like the new ones. They were good. So, whatever. I came up with That's a new twer- a new term for masturbation now. I think I saw it, but Quar- now I can't remember. It's what it quorum was. baiting. Quorum baiting. Yeah. Well, quarantunes. 
quarantunes. Is what we're talking about the, today. Hello, y'all. yeah, quarantunes. Uh, so, uh, so you've got that tune. You're going to let me use it. And then also people can keep themselves, uh, occupied and enjoy the podcast, heavy friending. Yes. Heavy Be- friending. And also, I think if you want to know more about the show that we're playing next week too, oh, yeah. I don't know when this is going online or anything like that. Uh, I think tomorrow, for you, but, oh, for real. Okay. So we're topical. We're still topical. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what I'm trying to know. do. Okay. Daily yeah, topical yeah, yeah. podcast. I was going to put out That's shows great. every day during South by Southwest. I teamed up mm. with, uh, with clubhouse Austin. They had all these yeah. great people coming down soul asylum, the posies, mm-hmm. all these people from all over the world. Obviously they mm-hmm. canceled. They tried mm-hmm. to resurrect it last week with a local situation, but then realized all this other stuff was going to be happening. And so mm-hmm. then in, in my depression on Saturday, yeah. I started coming out of it on Sunday, and then I woke up on Monday and said, hey, why don't I just do this because it's better than sitting in this bed freaking out. I can talk to my friends. Well, you know what? Like, at the end of the day, musicians are all um, innovators, and we know how to work with what we've got. I mean, I don't know how many times you showed up to a a show without a mic stand or – I mean, we always find a way to figure it out. So I, I think that we can do it now, too. Yeah. Yeah. We just got to be uh, creative. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if you want to know about the show we're playing, which yes. is a creative show, a live stream show, um, I believe you can go to isolationfest.com. That is what it's called, Isolation Fest. And, I, and as of now, we have an all-female stage crew, which I'm super excited about. Front of house, monitors, stagehands, everything. Um so that's really cool. We're getting donations of gear from a, a bunch of different people, pre-saunas and, and, and all kinds of stuff. So so it's going to be, you know, a thing. And I hope in the future that we can maybe, this isn't just like a one-time thing that we can kind of keep it keep it going to keep artists getting paid because that was the, the most important thing for us. We were going to have it this Friday. And we're like, let's wait and try to get more sponsorships so that people can get paid. That's the whole point of this is people aren't making any money so we got to do something yeah i hear you there yeah isolationfest.com i'll send you the all the info if you want to link it or whatever okay what about uh as far as like what what do you do at when you're not working on editing the podcast or or making music during this isolation time as there do you have any recommendations of shows or books or music you've listened to or a movie Okay, let me see. Oh, you know what I just, what movie I just saw? What's that? Uncut Gems. Have you seen that? Fucking awesome. Oh my God. It was so good. Yes, it was awesome. I didn't even know anything about it. Like, I, I guess I just, I just haven't been paying attention to anything lately. I've been did you like watch, in my own little bubble. Did you watch it at home? Yes. And did you get the full effect? Were you anxious? I was so anxious. It was making me sick to my stomach. I was like, oh, my God, this is making me sick. I saw it in the theater, and when I left, I was urging my friends, like, I think you should probably see it in the theater because I'm I'm scared you won't get this effect that you don't get from other movies. I could see what you mean Because it's relentless in the movie. And, like, if I I had the choice to pause that shit, I would have paused it because it – I mean, my heart was racing. My hands were clammy. I was, like, fidgeting. Yeah. It was very good. I was I was very pleasantly surprised by that. Also, like the the um, soundtrack was cool. Like you know, the music was pretty cool too. Yeah. It was like very, very cool. trippy and um, yeah, that was great. Actually, reminded me of the music from. Did you ever see Mandy with Nicolas Cage? No. Oh my gosh, that was my favorite movie of last year. Really, Mandy, okay. Nicolas Cage. The soundtrack is bomb. The score is bomb. The I don't know why I'm saying bomb. That's not even like something I say in my life. I love it. I, I do that a lot of times. I like just I'll just start saying something. I'm like, where where where, where did that come from? You it's know? bomb. Um, but it's bomb, y'all. I guess that's what I say now. Um, yeah, Mandy with Nicolas Cage. That movie is so good. But the score is like what really sets it off. That's a good one. You should watch that one. Yeah. But it reminded me a little bit of that. The score. Um, so yeah, that. What else have I done? Oh, I guess everyone's probably already watched this by now. But I did binge really hard. I binged it hard, like rock hard. Uh, Love is Blind. Finally, oh somebody on my podcast will talk to me about this. So did I. Gowdy. I totally did. And I ended it right in time to watch the reunion. Yeah, I saw when the reunion. Came... <laughs> oh, my Lord. I mean, what? 
Have you ever seen Have you ever seen Married at First Sight or no. uh, Ninety Day Fiance? No, no, I've never seen any of that shit. And and okay, so you may want to check those out because it's a whole. Those are the other ones where you're like, what okay. the? I mean, it just makes you question humanity. Yeah, yeah, but you can't stop watching it. And you then you question you question it. yourself while you're watching mm-hmm. it. Like there are mm-hmm. points where you're like, God, mm-hmm. these people are insane. And you're like, dude, you're the guy that's just spent four and a half hours watching this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Holding but so your think pee. about it like the people who watch The Bachelor and stuff, we have to stop judging them because there's a reason. It's just like it's like a hate watch and you can't help it. But I mean that show was redi- that show was so stupid. I mean, I can't even it's that unbelievable. was the stupidest shit. Can I But Married at First Sight is even worse because on Married at First Sight they walk down the aisle and meet they're, – they're in a wedding dress. And, and they say, they, oh, hi, I'm Laura. Oh, hi, I'm Johnny. And then they get married right on the spot. And then they're married, legally married. Yeah, it's fucked up. That's I'll, fucking crazy. You know how I got sold on that show was – do you ever listen to Pop Culture Happy Hour? The NPR I don't. Show? It's, a, it's a podcast no. from NPR that's really good. Anyway, they just talk about, obviously, pop culture that's happening. And yeah. so they talked about that, and they played a couple of clips from it. And I was just like, <laughs> that's fucked up, man. I would never watch that. And then they go like, and then there's this bizarre entrance of Nick Lachey, where the oh, lady God. says, hi, I'm Vanessa Lachey. And he goes, and I'm, and ob- obviously. I'm obviously I'm Nick Lachey. And I was like, oh, I'm watching that. And I came home from a gig. Yeah. I watched three episodes. I was up until five in the morning watching that show. And did you see on the reunion he said that and then Vanessa yeah. laughed? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, obviously like they a, know that everybody's been making fun of it. It's going to be his catchphrase now. No. Poor guy. Can I Poor tell guy. You, can I tell you a story about, about, uh, about seeing him in real life? Yeah. Okay, so we were at, I think it was LaGuardia, and we were, my band Skyrocket was flying back from New York from a show we played there. And... We were in the TSA line. So you know how it snakes around? And so you'll see, you'll mm-hmm. cross someone, but then you won't see them for it and you cross them again. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's like Nick Lachey. And he Every totally, time. he wore, he wore like, he wore those kind of jeans that have like the super design on the back. Like, <laughs> no offense to anyone yeah. that wears those, like but they're thick, super douchey. And like a thick stitch on the. Yeah, you know what I'm talking seams. about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I know. Me and, and my, my friend Ben are in line. And he is with a lady. Maybe it was this Vanessa. I don't know. But he was with a lady that had a very low cut, thin T-shirt that you could kind of see through. And you're standing Mm -hmm. in the TSA line and he caught my... So bra or no bra? Bra I can't remember. I cannot remember. This was like 10 years ago or something. Okay. So... You've seen a lot of tits since then. Yeah. (laughs) Well, my own, especially now at this point, I need a bra. Um, (laughs) But that's a a, a story for another show. But... Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so we get to it, and and my friend gazes upon her, her bosom yeah. for perhaps too long for Nick Lachey's liking, and he goes, "Hey, yeah. bro, you all right?" <laughs> nice, good on Lachey. You it know? was so great. <laughs> hey, bro, yeah. you all right? That's what he said. And you know what? That's like the most. That's like the most non kind of dickish way. To be like, hey, don't look at my yeah, yeah, my yeah, girlfriend's yeah. boobs so much. Yeah. Like, hey, y'all right, bud? Yeah. yeah. How funny. Yeah. I was dating That's this funny. girl once, and I once told the guy, I was like, you want me to tell your wife that you're staring at my girlfriend's tits? Because his wife was on the That's other side of That's a good way to put him, it. And he fucking ran off. That was yeah, pretty great. That's a good way to put it, yeah. too. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, okay, so love is blind. If you haven't Love watched it, it's up there. It's going crazy. You know what I, I started watching last night? Probably I shouldn't have, but it's really amazing. Pandemic on Yeah, Netflix. I saw that and I was tempted and I didn't. So you clearly have, <clears throat> you clearly are, a, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Diving in. A self-sabotager? No, no, no. Um, you're like freaking out and you're like, let me, what, 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 what can make me feel better? Uh, how about no. this a documentary about uh, pandemics while I'm in the midst of one? You know what I I've, no, no, I've, no. I've felt like I would like to see this team of experts talk about how they tackle this thing, so that way I have some kind of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. watching a documentary on Netflix it. doesn't give you an uh, a master's in in uh, pandemics, but it does give you a little understanding of how they're they they fight against it. Well, you should hear how some of these people talking on on social media. You think they were a doctor? I'm like, 
are you a dog? Like people are giving yeah. some oh, real yeah. specific oh, yeah. information, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure you don't know how to spell your properly. So I don't know if I can trust your advice, my, sir. My dad <laughs> is is a naysayer of the thing. The Democrats are trying to bring down Trump. Well, I well, I won't say long. this because it's your dad. I won't say this because it's your dad, but I kind of wish those people would all go get together in a real big party, and and let's lock them in there and see what they think, you know, in a couple days' time. Yeah. Because uh, well, not my dad; he's old. I don't know how many diabetes. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know how old people do. Anyway, they're dumb. Yeah, that's oh, what we say here. Here's a great movie I rented. That's fucking awesome to have to do with that kind of shit. Fox, the Fox News at Bombshell. Oh, Bombshell. Bombshell is yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's on my list. That's on my list. Yeah, great story. And uh, uh, For sure. Charlize Theron, unbelievable Megan Kelly. Oh, I just love Charlize. She's just so beautiful. And she's tall. I love a tall broad. Me too. You know? Can I ask you a question? Oh, I'm also oh. playing on another live stream thing that I have to mention. Do not let me forget. And then you'll ask me your question. But don't let me forget this. It's this week. It's a black fret thing. And it's a live stream. And I don't know what day it is, but everyone just pay attention. Are you a nominee? It's with no no, this I'm playing bass for Dossie and I just wanted to promote oh, her little show. That's nice. So, so yeah, it'll be this week sometime. I should reach stay out tuned. to Dossie. I like her. Remember yeah, I that? like her too. We're we're old pals now. Mem remember when Brother? we all sang? Oh yeah, I do. I was about to say, what are you talking about? But yeah, I do remember. Yeah. <laughs> I should, I yeah, yeah, should, yeah. I should learn. Uh, I should learn. Hey Jude, so we can all do a song every time we play together. Yeah, it's been so nice actually getting to be become friends with Sarah and MC because you know I'm so used to in music just being surrounded by so many men, and I feel like. You know, it's just been nice to have female friends who yeah. do what I do and to, to have, like, be able to talk to them or bounce ideas off of them. And it's been wonderful. So, yeah. So, I'm playing bass for her this week for some uh, for Black Fret live stream. So, everyone watch that if you want to see me stare at my fingers while I play an instrument that I don't know how to play. Is she so, doing yeah. the all female band? No. I'm just an excellent bass player, I guess. Oh. No, I uh, no, I, I'm not. I don't know how to play bass. I literally just learned for her, and <laughs> this will be my third gig with her. You'll be killer, man. Uh, You're a great musician. So actually, she. I actually really enjoy enjoy playing it. Like I, I don't know. I I didn't realize that I would, and now I'm like, I kind of like this. This is fun. So maybe I'll start adding it into my stuff. We'll see. Yeah, playing some bass, man. So you have a bass, mm -hmm. or did you rent one? Yeah, I know. I had one in my little studio. It's just like a squire. It's like a shitty squire. That's, yeah, you know, I have a like squire base. too. Yeah. I like those, um, man. And I would just use it to kind of like noodle. I, I, did, I, I didn't even know how to hold the fucking thing. So I was like literally before her show YouTubing like how to hold a bass or like how I didn't know what to do really with my hands or like how low it should be or stuff like that. You know, how you do when you first play guitar and you're like, what do I do? Um, Cheryl Crow looks but, pretty uh, cool playing bass. I think everyone looks cool and playing Michael bass. And Michael Steele from the, the Bengals. Before the first show, before the first show I played, we were doing sound check, and I was looking at the other band's bass players like, okay, that's how they're doing it. You know, this is how they're doing it. That's how, like, <laughs> inexperienced I am. But um, it was super fun, and I was like, okay. I think after these first, you know, I played two. Now I'm feeling a little more like okay, you know, imagine you know, you imagine your first show. If I feel like so green on it is at fucking Stubbs. Is that you where know, it was? That you're playing and it's yeah. <laughs> There's like all these people. It's not like you know when you play your first time. It's at it's more of like a dozen street at midnight on a Sunday type situation yeah. to get your you know butterflies out. And I'm like up there you know at Stubbs like oh my god, how do I play this instrument? Because um, I've been playing guitar so long, it's just like second nature. You know, I'm singing and my hands doing things, and I right. don't really know what it's doing. Right. Whereas with the bass, very... I gotta really like focus in and. Yeah. Yeah. And it's... Sarah's stuff is weird and funky, and she likes to do weird. You know, she likes to do weird stuff. Like I'm more of like a straight up pop. You know, four on the floor type of bitch and Sarah's like trying to change it up put a weird half measure in right you know, does she go muso on you how she does is that what happens she gets she all she tries prog. to play mm -hmm. yeah. she, she tries, tries to, to play, play with me 
and she did. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's awesome that you guys are doing that. Will you? Post oh my god, it's so fun. Yeah. What was the thing I was going to ask you? You said I have a question. I did, Your Honor. And then you took over my show. Well, I just wanted to remember to say that see because I always me. forget everything. I should see if know? Dossie wants to talk on the on the on the. I'm picture, sure she will. I'm sure thing. she will. And if she doesn't talk at least as much as me, I'm going to be really mad. No, she so talks. Just tell her. Yeah. <laughs> no, she doesn't talk about me as much as I talked about her. I'm going to be mad. Oh. So. I'll. I'll yeah. Make sure so you she... need to prompt her because um, I want to hear compliments about me and how fun it is to be my friend. And how much she's enjoyed getting to know me. So, okay. so so far, what I know about you is it is fun to be your friend. It's fun to be your friend too. You have a lot of energy, and you have a very uh, you ve you are very charismatic. And so, like when you go to a place like that, what's that place called? Nickel Face. What's it called? Nickel 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 City. Nickel City. When you go to Nickel City with someone like you, you're like, yeah, I'm with. I'm I'm here with her, so I'm her friend, so I'm pretty cool, right? That's that's, that's the very truth. sweet that's of the you truth. to say, yeah. Johnny. Yeah, that's like such a sweet compliment. Yeah, yeah. that's the truth, man. Hey, uh, thank you, man. Do you? I know we've talked about this a little bit, but do you do you find it in Austin the whole pop music scene? Do you feel like you got to band together with your bros because you guys don't? You know what I mean? Because we don't get no respect. Not that you don't get no. Re I see. Here's the thing: is we I don't love get no respect. That's what I think. If you want to know, that's what I think. Well, I, I just think the gatekeepers, not from the fans or the community or like other musicians. I just think the gatekeepers, a lot of them in this town, are old school. Yeah, and they got a lot of old school tastes. Yeah, and that doesn't necessarily mean that their tastes are right. You know, they may be right about a certain kind of music, but, you know, they got to I think it's we need to evolve a little bit more in this town because it does make people like me want to go other places. I mean, I play I sold out in New York. Yeah, I can't get barely, you know, it's hard to get people out here in this in this city. So, you know, I don't know. I, I know I, I we do have to band together. and We have like I know Sarah started Pop Union. What's which was, that? is a thing for it's it's just like a little there's like a group and we try to post about other pop shows and like promote other pop shows in town um but yeah you know what's hard is that like honestly like and KUTX played my Christmas song which was great but it is kind of hard to get on local radio if you're not like a guitar based band sort of they, they like pop but if it's like synth pop like super duper duper pop it is kind of hard to to get that that sort of um those those placements and stuff in in Austin, I think. But booking shows hasn't been hard for me with pop music. Where do you find yourself playing mostly? Just on you know like Swan Dive, Mohawk, Cheer Ups. I would say Cheer Ups is probably the most like pop pop friendly type place. Um, where else? I play Elysium all the time. I always say that, but I love Elysium. Um, I don't think you I, know all I along with the, the venues along Red River there. I don't think I've been to Elysium in like fourteen years. Yeah, it's a it's a real specific kind of place, you know. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but one but what I love about it is that everyone who goes there, like their regular patrons and stuff, really do like to hear music, and so. You, you can kind of have sometimes, not a built-in crowd, it's not like, you know, going to be how some of the venues are, but you have to bring people out for sure, but there are going to be people there that, that just came to hear music, and they pay attention, and then they buy merch, and then they come to your shows again, and so it's been a great place for me to, to get new fans, um, and also their sound is really good, and their sound people are really good and nice, you know, which is not usually the case, if I'm being honest. So, um, yeah, love it there. Well, do you get any attitude because people, uh, be, like you, you play to tracks sometimes, right? Your I play, tracks, I always play always to play tracks, tracks, but with yeah. a full band. I mean, is there I mean, any, do you get any scoff from the sound guy about that? No, sound lady? I think I, th no, I don't. I don't think that's everywhere I've gone. Well, now I did play one where the guy, didn't want to look at my input list or give me a sound check, even though he was so, you know, when you're trying to tell somebody, Hey man, you don't want to sound check this. I can tell by looking at you. 
no offense, I can just tell by looking at you that you're not going to be able to handle this situation that's about to happen. Yeah. And then they're like, no, 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 no. And then when it happens, you watch things unravel and you're like, well, I'll try to tell you. So I had like a couple like that where it was like an old school dude who's been doing sound on like, you know, regular four or five piece bands for his whole life. Yeah. And I try to tell them and they don't listen. But that's kind of been the only issues. The issues I have is with sound people is that I just want it to sound a certain way. And I spent, you know, 50, whatever I'm spending a pop at band practice and on Facebook ads and Instagram ads and poster design and social, all the shit I do to go into a show and then to walk in and have some dude walk up and not give a fuck what it sounds like. That ain't going to fly with me. And I am very vocal that's, about it. No, 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 no. That's a very, uh, that's a big thing that uh, I know in in sort of my my mentoring position at Austin Music Foundation and Anar as well. You know Anar, yeah, you know Anar. He's my advisor. Yeah, uh, I think <laughs> uh, uh, that's a thing that we always, you know, that's something that didn't occur to us because we were living off of our music and we were playing like five nights a week and traveling around in this mm -hmm. band and being in a trio. And when we got into a serious band and trying to get a deal and all this stuff, our 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 manager was like, man, you're going to want to get a sound guy. And we're like, oh, we don't want to pay mm -hmm. a guy. He's like, so you want to go and yeah. make this record and spend all this money doing this shit and then go rehearse and get a sound and then go and before you put it in front of people, have a guy that has no idea what's going to happen or what you sound mm -hmm. like. You know what I mean? Do the thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So for me, that's what I do is I, if it's a big show, you bring I hire a, somebody. You bring a person, yeah. And if it's if it's you know if it's like some little thing and they ain't gonna sound check me and it's boom 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 it's I'll, I'll kind of go with the flow. It's true. But or if it's a venue like for example Elysium, I played there so many times. Martin, the guy who mixes there, he knows what's up. He knows yeah. how my setup is. He knows what I want to sound like, and he does a great job. So I kind of gauge it based on the venue and and the event and all that kind of stuff. But pretty much everyone I know who's like getting you know pretty pro. Is yeah. bringing somebody with them. Well, another because another, you just yeah, another another option is something I do because I can't like once I have a band I can't really afford much else. You know, mm -hmm, you saw my band. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people, and they they you have to pay them right. So mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I do is I notice that that a lot of times a sound man will be more involved if he feels more invested. So I try to reach out to the sound man a couple weeks before in a super cool way and be like, hey, you want to hear. I have my set already, and these are like the recordings. This is the, you know what I mean? Like not just send them yeah. the input list, but send them a song list yeah. and be like, you know, I switch from keyboards to guitar, so here's the that on the list, mm -hmm. so you know which mic, to, you know what I mean? Just shit like that. Yeah. Not that you yeah. don't know that I'm saying that for whoever's listening right now and is like, oh, For the shit. listeners, the yeah. inexperienced listeners out there, and y'all take this wisdom, you can take it to the bank, okay? Because that's yeah. a Johnny Gowdy guarantee. Well, there's people there's people like Kurt Gannum at 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 uh, at One to One Bar that when I played there and used him, he'll email me back and be like, okay, what about this song? Do you want this? Like you, They're like, oh, okay. Oh, that's so I'm nice. I'm into it, yeah. Because you're like, hey, yeah, check it out. Yeah, a lot of times I send the input list, and then, like, the day of the show, I, I walk in, and I am I send a stage plot input list, and then the dude's like, I'm like, oh, did you get my input list? And they're like, ah, no, we don't need I'm like, yes, you do. That is something you need, especially you're doing line checks at this motherfucker. You don't want to yeah. You don't want to know what's about to happen up yeah. here. And my shit is involved. I've got in-ears. I've got tracks. I've got a click. I've got drums with triggers. And a, and a snare pad with, I've got different sounds. I've got all this shit happening at one time, you know? And so it would be wise if people would just take a few seconds to uh, get that information. But, but you know what? I have noticed that it is really prevalent now that, that people are playing with tracks involved in their oh, sets yeah. and people yeah. are triggering things yeah. and people are, even in indie pop yeah. with more guitar-driven stuff, they're, they're using, like, samples and stuff, so... I you know, that's the direction we're going in. It it makes me laugh now because I remember when uh when my band first went to showcase in Los Angeles in like back in like nineteen ninety eight and like we did this showcase thing at the Viper Room and there was a band that brought their multi track digital recorder mm -hmm. and the drummer wore headphones and there was like backing vocals and percussion and keyboards at 
were happening. They're and, doing it back then. And I remember coming back and going like, man, guys in, in LA, these guys are, they got, they're like, fuck a bunch of dudes up here, man. <laughs> let's just, <laughs> let's just bring these recordings. And you know, man, in, I, I don't down it in any way at all. And I've been in a couple bands that do it and that's cool. Uh, for me, I, it 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 doesn't it doesn't feel good while i'm doing it well there's absolutely no way to recreate the sort of music that i make in a of live course setting not. of course not without, without like four, four keyboard it, players there would be and too like, big yeah, yeah, of a disconnect yeah, yeah. between the music and the recordings and that's like the worst thing you can do as sure, from like sure. a branding perspective well, you know hey so trying to make it as cohesive as possible is my goal that's, but um, it feels good to me because I've got a real kit behind me. I've got real bass. I've got real yeah. keys. I'm playing guitar, and also fucking la, 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 singing those notes. You know, <laughs> feels good to me, baby. It feels real good. Do you know anybody at um at uh, the Austin Music Awards? Are you involved in that? Do I know them? I know some people there. Yeah, yeah. I was in the I've I was got, in the I nomination. I was in the nomination I got people. Some, Oh really? Yep. Interesting. I got to I got I'm, to be one of the nominators this year. Awesome. Okay, so I got some suggestions. Yeah. I've got a suggestion. You know, I went to the award. Show. Okay. In the midst of this, I mean, yeah, when I think you. back to that, when I think back to that, that was like less than a, that was less than a week ago. It was one week, almost one week ago. That was that was the first night that I was like, mm, you know, I don't, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, it's crazy what has gone what's, what's gone down since then. But anyway, I was nominated for best electronic artist. Very excited about oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the th they didn't they did not announce any of the nominees. They only announced the winners, and they were like boom, 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 so that we could watch people play ten minute songs. Okay. That's my suggestion is that, first of all, people are so excited to get nominated. You just cut me off the video. Okay. Sorry, sorry. can you hear me right now? Yeah, that was my mom calling. People are <laughs> so excited to get nominated, and you want to see your name up there for like two seconds. You know, like that's a big moment for people. You want, and you want to take a picture of it. Now you're sharing it on social media. Now you're talking about the Austin Music Awards. Now we're all networking more, and social media, it, things are spreading. Also, they should have had like a little mini red carpet because I had a couple friends there that were from the news, and they it was hard for them. They would they really would have liked to interview people who were nominated, and that would have been great for the nominees to get a little press, maybe, but also great for the award show to get a little mention. Anyway, those are just my suggestions <laughs> for next year. Let me no ask one you asked a question. Me, but, had you gone yeah. to the awards and you were not nominated? And you had to sit through all the nominees instead of just the who first would time. Go? Who would, would you go? Say, would you say, would you say, I'm just being devil's advocate. Because, hey, well, I feel I that way too. An, I would say that's what an award show is. I mean, that. what else is it other than here's the nominees, here's who won. Otherwise, why are you going? You went for what? I have an award. I don't know. Let me see. I have an award. Best oral history. And you guys, it's spelled O R A L. No, no. no oral. He's, it says best. Ears. It says it says oral. best oral. It oral. says O R A L. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've blown. I've blown. He blew them everyone all. in Austin, y'all. He I've blew blown them, all. them all. I got an award. <laughs> there was not even an award show for this. There wasn't. Nope. They just. They just. You get a thing, and it. Somebody says, uh, "Hey, someone's coming to take your picture." Is that from? Is that from this year? That's from that's that's from 2019. Yeah, just came awesome. out in November. Yeah. Well, good for you, man. I didn't win, but I mean, I should have won, and I was robbed, and um, I'll never forget it. Dude, one year <laughs> I won best keyboard player. So many people yeah, were robbed that year. No, it was terrible. It was, <laughs> you know what? Well, you know what else? Is I also think that when you get to a certain level in your career, yeah, you don't need to get nominated anymore for Awesome Music Awards. Like I don't. I, oh I just yeah, feel you don't like want to be like like if like if Britney Spears like not Britney Spears, but what if what if like uh uh uh, uh Billie Eilish was like, from Austin, like you'd be even competing like Ghost, with her exactly, yeah. and like Ghostland Observatory, they're who won in the electronic won, category, yeah, yeah. but like. 
they play here like once a year. They're like beyond kind of, you know what I mean? It's like we got to find a way to like draw the line on like what it means to be nominated and like how many shows you play in the town and like are you, I don't know. I just, because then it sounds exciting because like we all just kind of knew Ghostland Observatory was going to win. Well, the you know? thing is also is that there, yes, the problem with that sort of nomination process, which isn't, Mine actually is the best of Austin because the critics chose it. But what happens yeah. with the people when they're given a choice, they go with who they know. Exactly. Ghostland Observatory has like a decade and a half on you. Exactly. You know so, what yeah, I mean? So even people that, have, that haven't seen Ghostland Observatory in 10 years are like, oh, Ghostland, I'm going to vote oh, no, for them. The had right. so much good, had such a good time with them at their show in 2007. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I usually vote on there just to vote against people I don't like. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> I see somebody, I'm like, I don't like that bitch, and I pick somebody else. I do I remember, I do remember that list of of uh, of people to choose from was pretty tough because I have yeah. some brothers and sisters in that world. Yeah, Aaron Barons and I are pretty good friends. I would say that from Ghostland Observatory. Uh huh. Yeah. You well, know. tell him I'm tell him. I said, you know what? You. No, no one, <laughs> no one, no one feels an undeserved award more than the person that gets the award. And I will say that <laughs> in reference to winning your keyboard, best keyboard player. I do you know who Ian McLaughlin was? I don't know who anyone is. He was the keyboard no player from the Faces and the Rolling Stones. Oh, okay. And I was standing behind him in line as they were getting you to go up and get your awards. And I looked at him and I was like, what do you win, man? And he's like, oh, I won best keyboard player, man. And I was like, oh, no, no. And he's like, who won then, man? And I was like, me. And he was like, oh, man. Laughed out loud in my face. And from then oh, on shit. called me keyboard, keyboard God. I mean, look, we were buddies. <laughs> And I know what yeah. he meant when he said it, but we are definitely de- like I'm. I I don't deserve any. I definitely didn't then too. That was like 18 years ago or some shit. Well, next year I'm trying to sweep best bassist, best singer, best pop. Um, you know, and I want I want to be so big by next year's award show that they're like, it's not fair that she was nominated. She's too big. Yeah, that's my goal. But, yeah, did you know, Gary Clark Jr. won a bunch of them? Is that fair? Yes, he gets to go on Jimmy thing. Fallon. No, and, Gary, yeah. Gary, you're out, man. You're I see too what big. you're saying. You're too big. You're it's out, bud. Spoon. They have a greatest hits us album little out. Little guys that are fucking. We're shouldering this town. We're gigging every fucking week. We're fucking. You know what I mean? We're schlepping our shit around Austin for like no money, with these shitty sound guys being mean to us. Give give it to us. We and do, once we again, fucking, that's all we've got. And once again. What are those, when you bent down to pick something up, there's a crazy drawing behind you. Oh, that? The yellow thing? Yeah, that was from a <laughs> um, a homeless, so they did this little art thing where they would get homeless people to make the art in um, the some of the shelters and stuff, and then they would try to auction it and, and, and raise money for the homeless people. So um, I'm a really good person. Is what and I'm a jerk. those artworks represent, Gowdy. <laughs> also, I just like weird shit too, so you know. Yeah, it is. Um, what a talk! What a journey! I've yeah, I've really enjoyed. I feel better. I do too. This actually, yeah. these these conversations are taking me out of uh, my existential crisis. Yeah. Also, I want to say I love the Austin Music Awards, and um, no offense to you, <laughs> if you're still listening, please, Austin Music yeah. Awards. <laughs> Yeah, if you're still listening, if, if if you guys are still out there, um, I'd love to be nominated again. Just I'd love it if you said my name on the stage so that I could take a picture of it and send it to my mom. Yeah, you know. But it was in the it was in the thing. There's proof of it. It's not like there's not. Proof I know of there's it. proof. I there's proof. There's proof. But you know, like you want people to be like, and it this is, person, and is, then they look around, and then you're like, ha ha, look at me. It was me. Is we- I'm Primo the alien. It's weird that they that they rocked no suspense because part of the excitement is Primo, uh, yeah, Ghostland Observatory, several other yeah. people that I cannot remember on that list, and the winner is I can, but I want to give them publicity, you know, so <laughs> won't say them, refuse. <laughs> <laughs> They're my competition now. What's Dossie's uh, website? 
What's her website? Yeah, Dossi ATX. Is it that? I don't know. Let's say my website, PrimoTheAlien.com. Well, I was gonna. I was. I was preluding into Let your see. website. Let me see. Let me find Dossi Austin. DossieMusic.com. DossieMusic.com. Okay, so DossieMusic.com. Yeah. They can probably find out when you're going to be playing the bass with her so they can, they can see you. And, of course, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. alien rock star alter ego of Laura Lee Bishop, Primo, will be Primo. Uh, will be rocking What's the Day of the Black Fret Show? You don't know yet. Um, Or, no, the our show would be on the 27th, Right, 27th, I think. that's right. Next mm-hmm. Friday. It's called Isolation Fest. Isolation Fest is going down next Friday. A lot of ladies on the bill. You got Dossie yeah. on that too, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Who else? Double Dose of Doss. Double Dose of Doss. Can't get enough. Can't get enough. Uh, who else is on that? You said mostly women. Daisy. Uh, we got Daisy, O'Connor, Zeta Jewel. Zeta Jewel. And uh, we may have a couple others that we're, well, we're working out the Does details. It, you the know? girl from Zeta Jewel, she works at one to one. I don't right? know. I think so. I think she got laid but off. But I like her. I like and her I like Zeta Jewel a lot. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, I don't. I, and Flora and Fauna, we're going to play, but I believe one of them is immunocompromised. We just got to be, everybody's got to be really careful right now. Yeah. So um, that's why our show, I mean, it's going to be locked down, skeleton crew, gloves, masks, sanitizing between sets, not sharing mics. Not Bands sharing are not going to be there at the same time. You know, just as much as we can to lock it down. So, All right. Well, Laura, it's been great talking to you. <clears throat> People get out there and check out uh, uh, Primo the Alien. You find her on the Spotify's Please. and all the places. New album, Please. or new, new song with Ace Buchanan dropping 26. That's next week. That'll be going down. Uh, you're going to send me a tune to play? Going down. Yeah, you're I'm going to send you send me all, a tune to... anything you want, baby. Didn't you say there was a new tune? For... I could play a snip at the beginning and at the end? Yeah, yeah, the okay. one, this one, this the, one. I'm the gonna, Ace, it's a sneak Ace peek. Oh my yeah, God! So we're sneak peeking it. Thank you for yeah, thank like you. Maybe just play it. Maybe play like a clip. You know, it's not the whole thing. But well, should it? Well, let me. Ask, I'll discuss it with him and see what he says. You let me know. If not, I'll play something else. But you need to let me know really soon because I need to put this show. Yeah, together I'm gonna let so you know like tomorrow. in like I'm gonna let you know like today. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever he gets out of Dungeons and Dragons, I'll ask him. Okay, when but this he's goes, probably like. <laughs> <laughs> he's on you know, a quest right now by the now, end of this okay? thing I'm going to be in Dungeons and Dragons um, thank you so much for talking to me and uh, and when this is done let's go again to uh, Thirsty Nickel Nickel City Nickel City let's do it baby. Thirsty Nickel what is wrong oh, with that's me? a different one I I'm got like some somebody's show. grandfather I, I used to play at Thirsty Nickel back in the day that's brother. a place okay. on 6th Street 36 okay. yes okay, yeah I knew I'd see you don't want to play there I, w- I don't <laughs> Uh, enjoy your quarantine you Be too creative. man people check out Heavy Friending and check out Primo the Alien thanks Laura Good to- my buddy Laura Lee Bishop talking to me under quarantine both of us on, a, on, on the screens talking I know she didn't she didn't want to actually talk on the screen. She wanted to talk on the phone in case I looked at my phone. But I was looking up her stuff. I swear to God, I was looking at her Instagram. My goodness. Follow her on Instagram. If you follow her on Instagram, which you should, uh, go to primothealien.com. And uh, has links to all of her socials. But follow her on Instagram because that way you'll find out what's going on with Isolation Fest live stream concert, which happens next Friday, March 27th. Follow her on the socials and find out exactly what time she's playing and stuff like that. She did say she's going to be playing bass with Dossie on that show, so that should be cool. And of course, we are premiering her single, a collaboration with a European artist, Ace Buchanan. The song is called Secret. As soon as I stop talking, you will hear that song. All right, follow Primo the Alien on primothealien.com. Go find her, uh, her podcast, Heavy Friending, with Joe Barlow. Great podcast. You can find it wherever the podcasts are served. That's Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I think they're on Spotify. I follow them on Stitcher because I use Stitcher mostly for my thing. I use Spotify a little bit for my thing as well. That's that's how I follow podcasts. Anyway, they're available wherever you find the podcast. The show is great. They are very, very funny people. I have been a guest on that show. All right? And don't forget when you're out there checking out Heavy Friending, if you're new to this podcast, you can follow us 
on Spotify, on Stitcher, on Apple Podcasts, wherever it is you find podcasts. Tune in. Rate the show. Follow us. Leave us a comment. Let us know what's going on. I'm bringing five shows this week. I don't know how long I'm going to keep up the pace of Everyday Podcast. Maybe I'll do it for a while. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> I got to take some time and make some music too. So maybe I'll do a whole bunch in one day and then, uh, and then take a couple days to make some music and then do a whole bunch again. Maybe that's how I'll do it. All right? All right. Without further ado, let's hear this collaboration between P- Primo and Ace Buchanan. The song is called Secret. It will be available Friday, March 20th on Bandcamp. That's day after tomorrow. And, uh, and then Friday, uh, March 26th everywhere else. I suggest listen to the song here if you like it. Pitch them a little money on Bandcamp for the first week while it's out. This is that's that's one way you can contribute to society. It's not a whole lot of money out of your pocket, and uh, and if it is, then don't you know wait for it to come out on streaming. But if you do have the money to spend on the single, get it. It'll help out Ace B Cannon. It'll help out my friend Primo. The song is called Secret, and here it is. Hope you enjoy it. Have a great day. Talk to you tomorrow. Let's get down.